most people are so stuck on just Google, just Facebook, and they're forgetting about all these other platforms that you can still advertise on. On today's episode of Rise, Grind, Repeat, we talked to Jared from FG Marketing. We dive deep into the different marketing strategies that they're using to sell big ticket items. Let's dive right in. Jared, thanks so much for uh, joining on another episode of Rise, Ground, Repeat. Absolutely. Um, I, I first saw you when you came on for uh, an SMS uh, social media summit um, podcast with Louie, and, and I loved everything you were talking about. There's a lot of data, a lot of analytics, a lot of Google stuff, a lot of just a lot of good stuff that, that really resonates and just how you approach digital marketing. And I uh, wanted to get you in on here. And before we go in, too far. I would love to just kind of hear your background. I mean, you, you do have extensive knowledge on the ins and outs. It sounded like more of the Google platform. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, what, what is your background? How did you get into marketing? And yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, I, I originally, when I was in high school, I wanted to go to the military pretty bad. I was, I liked the action side. I was in paintball airsoft, like just growing up. Right. I love that. I love that stuff, you know, getting in there, you know, shooting around and, and, uh, you know, ultimately I didn't like the pay. I didn't like, uh, having to sign your life over for two years. And, and if they say be there, be at this time, you know, you, you better be there. Otherwise, you know, you're deserting and all that stuff. So I avoided that. And, and I really learned about entrepreneurship. Uh, we had a class in high school. And so I went to that class and, and learned more about business. And at that point in time, uh, one of my best friends, um, he had part ownership in a paintball company. He just taken it all over. And so I came in as a 50, 50 owner with him and I handled all the admin side of the work, the paper side, um, you know, setting up all the bank accounts, you know, all that stuff. So that's where I really kind of got into the business aspect of things and learning how to work for yourself a little bit. And, and that idea of, of just owning your own business and that, that entrepreneurship spirit. So, and what year was that? Uh, that was 2016. That's when okay. I graduated. Yep. So, uh, almost four years ago now, I think. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so that was 2016 and then that business didn't last more than a year. Um, we just didn't, at the end of the day, we didn't get customers you know is that we were from a small town 2,000 people max maybe um, just in the township of course there's, there's more outside of it but you know our, our school my class had I think uh, 200 kids in it total so I mean you know not a big class at all not a big uh, town so you know getting the word out there um, was definitely a major thing because not everybody was just paintballing in a small city like that so uh, we got a lot a couple bachelor parties we were we were um, there's a bar like right here and we were, we were just in the backyard just big old paintball course set up. That's and cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it worked out well. I mean, bachelor parties came in, they were able to go get some drinks and then they come out and, you know, have some fun on the course. So that was good. But at the end of the day, we just didn't have enough customers. So we ended up uh, shutting that down. We sold all this stuff. And then, I mean, not, not four months after that, I was, I already started up a moving company. Um, cause I had worked at, uh, a company called Slumberland Furniture for, you know, three yeah. years prior, uh, since high school. And, in that we delivered furniture, um, of course, customer service, you know, learned all that, knocking on doors, um, you know, Fun. bringing couches <laughs> in, yeah, carrying heavy, heavy furniture. And so through that learning process, you learn how to stack a truck, pack a truck and uh, get into it a little bit. So um, there's no moving companies in, in the town there. So I started that up. Uh, we rented U-Hauls and used U-Hauls uh, for wherever we went. Of course, they have great benefits. Um, they, you know, have insurance. Yeah. Uh, you break down on the side of the road, they come fix your truck or they give you a new one. So but it's less like, logistics you got to figure out. Exactly. In case yeah, go wrong. Exactly. And, and overhead expenses cut down way, way, mo way more too, because you don't have a truck to worry about. You don't have like the insurances, you know, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, so I did that and, and that's where I, I was like, all right, I need to find my next customer. That's my number one goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, all this is useless unless I find a new customer to serve you know, every time. So yeah. So that's where I jumped into, you know, I started with business cards, you know, I pinned those up on boards and then I started with Facebook page and, you know, that's where I really started to dive into it. And that same year I took Ty Lopez's course, uh, the SMMA uh, marketing course. How was it? I mean, I, I see him uh, obviously everywhere and right, I've never taken yeah. anything from him. So I, I took the traveling CEO one cause that's, that's the one that interests me the most, right. Is, is revolved around the SMMA, um, uh, ideology where you work from a laptop, your phone, Wi-Fi, and travel the world and get new clients in different countries, you know, states, whatever yeah. it may be. So I really liked that idea. And, you know, one day I knew I was going to, you know, 
didn't know when, didn't know how, didn't know where, uh, but I knew I was going to run an agency, you know, one day. And so I started just taking that knowledge and applying it to the uh, moving company. So we've got the Facebook page going and that's where I really dug into Google ads more than I did Facebook ads. I didn't really know much about Facebook ads. So I dug into, you know, of course, Google My Business, you know, get all that set up. And is that where, did you try and learn the Google ads first or did you try to go Facebook and then saw results and then tried to learn? Because it sounds like you do a lot of tried this, tried this, tried this and being analytical, right. trying to identify the ROI of exactly. each thing you're doing. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I just left Facebook organic, you know, not much came from it. Um, from, from my understanding, it was cool to just be able to direct people there and just kind of share a post here or there. Um, but you know, early on, I didn't think too much about my social presence as a business. Uh, I didn't take pictures of, of the jobs or post them much or anything like that. You know, I, was, I liked getting reviews. That was always a good thing. Um, but Google, the reason I liked Google so much was because of the buyer's intent, right? Most people go to Google because they have a problem to solve, right? Whether that be a product, you know, they need a plumber, they're moving, mm -hmm. you know, they're looking for real estate, they're looking for a mover. So I really liked that aspect of it. And so I figured, you know, that's the best return for my dollar that I'm going to get. So I went on there and just started with a simple Google campaign. And, and I, I think the biggest thing, you know, as an agency owner now is, is, having the ability to spend my own money, lose my own money, make my own money mm -hmm. and systematize it is what really gave me a lot of knowledge to come into this business and be able to help clients the way we do. Because, you know, I actually took the time to lose my own personal money and with my business as well in order to get a return and, and learn off that data and use how to use these platforms. So, um, yeah, that was very helpful. And, and, you know, onto the second year, I was able to kind of automate that, you know, get an automated system going in. That's where I started to integrate email, you know, start giving them, you know, hey, moving tips and tricks, packing tips and tricks. Because at the end of the day, I was able to provide that value for free, but it just made my job that much easier because yeah. now they're packing stuff correctly. Now they're, now they know what they're doing. Now they're not so stressed out and they're getting mad at us for, you know, stupid stuff that's <laughs> not even in our control. Right. So, um, and then from there, I, you know, in 2017, I moved down to Arizona. And then uh, just last year, I sold that moving company to another couple of young entrepreneurs and I actually still do all the marketing for them. That's so, cool. yeah. So, I mean, I just knew it so well and, and obviously I'm doing this and I have so much other, you know, two years of experience with working with other clients as well. The automations, the CRMs, the pipe drive, you know, getting leads in the door and converting those leads into revenue. You know, I think that's really important is not just driving leads, but, you know, how are those leads converting to revenue? Because that's the ultimate goal. So, um you know, I still help them out with that, but, but yeah, now I find myself here, you know, we have the marketing company for, for going on our third year now. And then the uh, hemp clothing line as well, that, uh, we're, we're looking for funding at the moment, you know, mm -hmm. kind of going slow with it. Not too crazy. Of course, clothing can be kind of expensive to get started and you know, I got to get the product and then to sell it. So it's not, you know, your drop shipping or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's a quick rundown of my background. I mean, I, I just turned 22 yesterday, so it's not like I have, nice. a, it's not like, thank you. It's not like I have a, a ton of history, you know, behind yeah. me, but, uh, but, you know, since I was in high school, I've been in, in been in business and, and learning and spending my money, yeah. losing my money yeah. and then making money too. So uh, it's all help. And that's, I mean, that's probably the key. I mean, you got a lot of people in marketing that, I mean, learn it and, and, execute for clients, but haven't had their, haven't basically gambled with their own money. And it's like, Oh wait, did that kind of flush down the toilet? How could I not do this? And what can I do? And I mean, you, you, you learn quicker, much quicker whenever you got your own skin in the game. Um, and no, that's cool. I mean, everything you just said, absolutely love it. I mean, that's essentially what we're, we're trying to do, create valuable content, use that to gain awareness and all that type of stuff. Where have you done, uh, uh, the emails that you're sending out? I mean, tips on, on packing and stuff like that. Have you done much on the native side of things like native advertising, like Outbrain or Taboola or? So not, not quite yet. Um, that's, uh, it, it kind of just, the biggest problem is, is allocating that budget to proper platforms, mm -hmm. um, and finding those platforms that are getting your return on your money. Um, and then obviously testing new platforms. You know, I'm a big believer in, in testing new things because you're never going to find that next thing that works better unless you start trying new things, right. Yep. And testing new things and new platforms. So, you know, a lot of people want to go after Pinterest, you know, Snapchat. It's like, you know, I, I don't disagree with that, but I would more retarget on those platforms with based on the website visitors. So that's that's kind of one thing that we've been attacking quite frequently is, you know, we know Google and Facebook and the, the different targeting you can go after and even buy, you know, data lists and, mm -hmm. you know, directly market to that list, you know, and, and be in front of the people you want to be in front of. And then based off that website visit, you know, we try to follow them around wherever they go, whether that be Pinterest, Snapchat, Twitter, um, you know, some of these other platforms just don't have the detailed targeting. And, uh, yeah. 
And I know like geofencing and uh, you know native targeting, they're, they're definitely got way more touch points now than uh, most, I mean, even Google and Facebook. So, you know, I think uh, you sent me that one over Instagram that has like the over 300K um, oh, you know, yeah. touch points. Actually, that's, that's them right there at Chuzel. They were in oh, on a perfect, podcast. perfect, yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, it, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's what we're huge on. I mean, that's what I, I, I love is like, I don't know, to me, search is great. I grew, I mean, that's where I started in all this is yeah. working with Google and on the search side of things, um, back when it was called AdWords, but it's figuring out how to allocate your budget based off of what platforms you use to prospect or introduce the brand where <clears throat> I think it might, I mean, in today's world where you need 15, 16 different touch points, um, sometimes I think it might not be the best use of dollars to introduce the brand on search because the CPM, I mean, the CPM is a couple hundred bucks and yeah. some, in some instances, cost per clicks are higher where it's like you can use something like um, uh, the the how to pack properly and stuff like that. And I mean, that Chuzel company, I mean, Trade Desk is another one. I mean, yeah. but they all have data providers where you can target people based off of if they filled out a credit application on mm -hmm. for a mortgage, I mean, they're probably in market to move. Right. And so you can use all this data to identify your audience and then use things like, I mean, even GDN. Um, but the, the native ads, I mean, we're running some stuff on Taboola right now as well, where CPMs are literally like a dollar 80 cost okay. for clicks are like 20 cents. Mm -hmm. And then all we're doing is targeting marketing decision makers, uh, CMOs, marketing directors. So, I mean, they have those data points. And so it's like when you get a click at 20 cents, 30 cents, they hit the website. Then, I mean, that's, that's where then we start building up an audience, a larger audience, and then use like RLSA to yeah. then re only retarget on the search. Cause I mean, the marketing clicks, I mean, uh, 50, 60 bucks or yeah. so. And so it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, we've bootstrapped everything. And so whenever you have a pretty minimal budget and you're paying 60 bucks a click, it's like, yeah, we only get we only get two clicks a day, right. three clicks a day, right. and so yeah. it's like, all right, well, how can we, how can we reach the audience that we want, and what platforms can we use to reach that audience where we're building up an, uh, a larger audience and then retarget so that our overall reach on search isn't as large yet. I mean, eventually there'll be a time where, if we do branding well enough that I mean, when people see the brand name, we want to client to click, and the conversion rates will be better on those non-brand clicks. But yeah, no, where what what you're talking about is just like yeah, right up. My alley, what I love. It's like, where, yeah, where do we split the budget to introduce the brand, show the value of what we bring, and then where that that conversion comes in? And huge proponent of just retargeting everywhere. Because again, being top of mind. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a huge key. You know, uh, it, a lot of people. You know, I think most people forget that. You know, they think they're the only one selling to that that particular individual, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, completely <laughs> completely backwards. You know, I I read a crazy statistic that's like people are seeing over 5,000 advertisements a day, like really? just crazy amounts, if not more. And so like that makes you think why that repetition is key and why you're trying to program that subconscious mind to remember why they're seeing that ad, you know, how did they get that ad? You know, and it, it, I don't know if you do this, but uh, I, I allow my phone to follow me everywhere. I mm -hmm. location, like just have it all right. I want to see how people are coming to me with advertisements so I can learn from that. You know, are they targeting me based off of where I go? If I go to eat somewhere, next thing you know, I'm getting an ad. I'm like, all right, well, they're, they're probably, you know, tracking me somehow yeah. as I walked in that location. Yeah. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm truly fascinated by that aspect of advertising in general. And I think, uh, you know, the native advertising targeting and the geofencing and all that is a big proponent in, in digital advertising nowadays. And most people are so stuck on just Google, just Facebook, and they're forgetting mm -hmm. about all these other platforms that you can still advertise on and get quality traffic out of it as well. So I think, yeah. uh, I think you touched on a key point there. You know, I think, uh, you know, even, even just running blog posts, you know, I think that's a big thing for us, you know, uh, with high ticket items in general, you know, depending on the demographic, you know, a lot of those people who are spending that, that high ticket dollar are usually business owners, you know, they, they make a good money or they're yeah. you know, in a corporate job. And so, you know, it's retargeting with a, a piece of content where they can read through it, some nice long form text mm -hmm. copy, instead of just having a video or a picture every time, you know, trying to, you know, persuade them in, you know, just a nice little sub, you know, headline and, and, uh, you know, bring them to that website and reading that blog, you accredit it yourself a little bit. And, yeah. and so, yeah, you know, I, I love all those strategies and, and, at the end of the day, I think most of, mostly we use, uh, it depends on, on the client. Again, you know, like right now we have a client where we use Google for all front end, um, yeah. based off the searches and what they're looking for. And then we remarket to them based off Facebook, right? Cause, yeah. um, Facebook's targeting 
sure, cold targeting is good and all, but you know, we'd rather spend money on the people who we know are already qualified. So that's why we just run that qualified traffic based off the keyword clicks and searches. And then we remarket to them via Instagram and, and Facebook. So I don't know. Do you guys do something similar to that sometimes? Yeah. And actually having a, having a conversation now where uh, um, we just got a new client and, and it came up like uh, they do B2B <clears throat> and it came up to where uh, I was like, hey, we should be doing some Facebook. It's like, oh, we tried that. It doesn't work. And I was like, eh, but how did you use right, it? And that, yeah. that's what's always great is like, I mean, people can use things a certain way. I mean, you could use only a hammer to try and build a house or there's other tools that could be used exactly, to build a house and yeah. you're probably going to build it either quickly or a little bit more quickly or better yeah. using different tools or just using things differently. And so it was, uh, um, I mean, again, using some DSP or whatever, uh, basically to, to identify logistics people and stuff that, that would be, uh, the decision makers of using their service. And it's like, once we drive them to the website, then let's maybe retarget on Facebook and drive the lead ads. Cause they have a sweet white paper yeah, where it's like, sure. we, we probably, uh, I mean, there, there wasn't any targeting within, uh, uh, Facebook. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's a bit, but not as, as apparent as some of the other platforms. So it's like, well, let's not prospect on Facebook, let's use another platform to prospect. Once we know we have our target audience, let's let's figure out how to use Facebook and its capabilities to do what we need it to do to continue the conversation. 100%. Yep. No, I definitely agree with that. And and I'm curious, actually, have you guys, uh, uh, I've never personally tried this um, in our in our uh, marketing mastermind. We've, uh, uh, one of the guys has talked about this a little bit where they actually don't do any targeting. They let the content be the filter and they just like pick a city. Uh, I mean, male, female, sometimes mm -hmm. maybe, uh, you know, the top 10% or, you know, the, um, yeah. the income demographic, and then they just let the ad go. Um, have you guys ever tried that with, with no detailed, uh, targeting and just some demographic stuff? Yeah. So we, t we, we tried it, uh, testing it with a, a solar company and, and, uh, I mean, on the front end, the cost per lead was a bit lower, sure. but I mean, we're finding, I mean, looking at the CRM data that the conversion rate wasn't as strong. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and come to find out there were a big chunk of leads that were coming in where people lived in apartments or something like that. Gotcha. It's like, they can't even get the product. Yeah, and so, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it's cause I, I, I can't remember where I saw, but I've heard a bit more testing where that that's done is just like, open it up to everyone and then let, let Facebook's machine learning kind of yeah. identify the audience and stuff like that, which from a cost per lead and all that, I, I think that they, their, their machine learning can do a great job at that. But what they, they don't have is that backend data and, and how are these leads converting? And, yeah. and like you said, uh, how is all this turning into revenue and ROI, which is ultimately what everyone wants. And that's, yeah. um, and that's, I mean, that's, that's, I, I just love the analytics side and, and CRM implementation and optimization because that's where it's like, I just worked at different agencies and it's always like, well, we had over a million, a million impressions or had millions of impressions and clicks and likes and all that. And then it's just like, cool, but right. how much revenue did exactly. I make? Like that's, that's what always came up and that's where a huge disconnect was. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. You know, I think uh, one of the big things that we do when a, when a client comes or, you know, we're like, all right, so we want to identify some key performance indicators for you, right? Like, you know, clicks, impressions. I mean, that's one side of, of you know, KPIs, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how we measure the effectiveness of the advertisement and click-through rate. How is it resonating with the audience that we're sending it to? Um, but additionally, we want to measure KPIs based off conversion rates, you know, your CRM leads and, and how you're converting those leads, how many are winning, losing. So I, I definitely agree there. You know, some agencies are like, yeah, we got you a million impressions. <laughs> well, perfect. Cool. How how did that help yeah. my bank account? You know, yeah. how did that uh, bring some money back to me? You know, and, and so that's, you know, that's a big thing that I touch on too, is, is personalizing those KPIs for, for businesses based on what they want to see. Right. I mean, if, if a company comes to us and they say, yeah, we, look, we just want to, we just want to be in front of a couple million people a month, you know, and just, you know, solidify our brand yeah. awareness, like a, a big company, like, you know, McDonald's, just buying a billboard here or there, you know, some, some advertisement placements and, you know, they're not, not necessarily tracking the the revenue, but they're like, you know, we need more impressions because we want to remind people that we're still yeah. here, we're right down the block, you know, so on and so on. You know, that's perfect. We'd love to take on a client like that. But at the end of the day, you know, most clients are not like that. Yeah. You know, most yeah. clients are looking for a return on their money. You know, they just don't have money to throw out the door and just start mm -hmm. tossing it out the window, you know, and, and letting it fly. So um, that's that's a big thing that we try to touch on is, is what do you want to see in your business, you know, and how can we help you achieve that goal? Um, and, and a big thing about us too is, you know, 
a client could need marketing services, but we may not be the perfect fit for them. So we'll actually turn a lot of people away. I mean, we're not just, you know, I try to think of ourselves as, uh, you know, we want to solve a problem for you. You know, yeah. we, we don't want to just take your money and try to run with it. You know, mm -hmm. if we can't solve a problem for you, we're going to try to bring you to somebody that uh, we know and trust that could probably solve this problem for you and get you on the right road. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I love that. And that's, I mean, something that we've, I have had to learn is, is, I mean, at the very beginning, it was just take anyone and everyone. And then, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's, uh, after, I mean, a lot of it is learning too. Cause like I, I've never ran a business or anything. I've never managed anyone before all this. And so it's yeah. like, you say yes. And then also it's like, all right, we're getting this much. And then you add up all the time and everything's like, wait, we got more going out than what's coming in. And like, eh, you can't really sustain that way. And so it's, it's a lot of learning, which is, which has been fun. Um, but I mean, what what you're doing in your your agency it, it seems like you guys focus more on high ticket items how did you how did you get there and one thing that's interesting that um uh you guys do is um have a blend or different models can you kind of i guess first explain how you got into more of the high ticket yep. industries and i guess d did that kind of lead to the model pricing structure pricing model that you guys do um where you have just it seems like hours and then there's a performance based model as well. Yeah. So, uh, it, that's a great question. I mean, you know, we, we took on, just like you said, everybody under the sun that wanted mm -hmm. to give us money and, you know, it doesn't matter who they were, or what they were doing, you know, we're like perfect, you know, we we're, you know, young business owners. So we're like, money's coming in the door. Fantastic. Right. We weren't necessarily paying attention to the outcome of what we could do for them and, and the overall effect of what we could do. So, I think the the biggest thing why we got into the high ticket space was, you know, we we've tried working for you know some small supplement companies that are selling a, a bottle of supplements from ten dollars to forty dollars, right? But they also, I think a big thing that most marketers don't understand is the backside of businesses, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you could sell you could sell a hundred forty dollar products, right, and you got four four grand, but at, again, the backside of the business to us that looks like okay, great, we made you four grand, you only put in two grand, you got to you know, 200% uh -huh. ROI, right? And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, well, after expenses, after we paid for the products again to restock the ones that we sold and the packaging and the labeling and the branding and all that stuff, right? They're negative, right? I mean, yep. so it's like, you know, that's why we got in the high ticket stuff is you have to sell hundreds and hundreds and be, I mean, acquiring customers at dollars, if not yeah. pennies on the dollar to be profitable in some cases, you know, especially with like drop shipping nowadays, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're selling a product that's $2, 30 cents for $13. They could be acquiring that customer for $5 and they're really small margins there. So, you know, selling, selling a car, selling a high ticket item, even like, uh, you know, we work, uh, one of our clients is we're cutie, the co-working space out here, you know, that's a high ticket item, you know, oh, that's nice. a, that's uh they're either selling a, you know, $225 co-working space where it's, you know, you just jump around from desk to desk to yeah. desk, or they're selling, you know, a $5,000 office, private office suite to, you know, 10 people, 10, 20 people. Um, so again, their margin to spend more ad spend and get a better return is, is there, right? I mean, they could, we could spend $200 to acquire a customer, even a thousand dollars to get that customer to convert in after they are a lead. He spent twelve hundred dollars to seal a three thousand dollar a month deal for a twelve month lease. Yeah, you know that's that's yeah. a that's a significant uh, customer acquisition cost right there. So mm -hmm. that works out well. You know, even even with the yacht company that we helped out here, you know they uh, they're selling a two hundred fifty thousand dollars share to a four million dollar boat. Right. I mean, for us to we were acquiring leads, you know, anywhere from eighty to one hundred dollars, and then putting them into the automated pipeline process and the you know mm -hmm. uh, email process. And eventually, you know, we helped them make a couple million dollars in return for, you know, the five figures that they put yeah, in. So, that's, that's so right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, uh, that's why the high ticket item is, is big for us. And that's why we like it so much is there's a lot more room to play and test a little bit mm -hmm. rather than just like, you got to get it right the first time. And if not, I mean, they're going to be, they're going to be pissed off at you and yeah. they're not going to be too happy and they're losing money. And then, you know, we're sitting here scratching our heads, scrambling, yeah. like, well, what do we do now? Yep. So we, we took a lot of that pressure off ourselves and we just wanted to operate more effectively and be more efficient with, with what we were doing and be able to learn better. Um, so that's why we switched over to the high ticket items to really just, you know, attack that. I mean, we're not like stuck in the high ticket item either. Yeah. You know, we take a couple people here or there, whether it be a service or, um, Sometimes, depending on the e-commerce uh, company, we'll take an e-commerce product in. But, uh, but yeah, so, and then as far as pricing goes, you know, 
our, our pricing is based off value that we're providing. Mm -hmm. You know, after after the two years, um, we don't charge any hourly. I think I think paying people hourly is probably the worst way to incentivize anybody because yeah. if you pay me hourly for a thirty day period to get something done, I'm probably going to take as long as I can to do it because that means more money for me. Yep. Versus if I'm paid via performance or uh, just a fixed fee, monthly fee based off the value I'm providing, I'm more incentivized to get that done quicker and spend less time on it and get you better results. So that way I get paid more and I get more bang for, for what I'm getting paid for. So that's really what our model revolves around is how much value are we providing that client? You know, like whether it comes down to email, Google, Facebook, it would just try to identify, you know, how much value are we going to give you? And then you know, how much do we deserve for the value we're providing your company, yeah. you know? So, I mean, even generating that couple million dollars, you know, I believe them paying us our fee is well worth to generate that much extra <laughs> revenue yeah. for them, yeah. right? So, um, and then, you know, we, we charge, you know, d depending on the website, you know, we try to stay a little bit away from web design, but, mm -hmm. you know, of course, if a client needs it, you know, if a, we bring on a client, you know, and we don't try to like go in there and just change everything they're doing right away, we want to run some ads. And then we, I take a look at the analytics data, especially Google Analytics. You know, I think that's by far one of the most powerful tools yeah. uh, in the in the book. You know, just especially if you know how to use it and leverage all the data that it holds. Um, you know, you can leverage that and just identify. All right, so we have a ninety percent bounce rate, and you know, these pages have a ninety five percent exit rate. You know, we need to identify and change some things here so that we're mm -hmm. keeping people on there longer. They're not just exiting off as soon as they hit. And also looking at the traffic we're sending there too, you know, is it relevant? So uh, I think, a, you know, a big thing for us is, is you know, identifying those things and then based off, uh, you know, the client's needs, we'll, we'll make some changes to the website and, you know, charge accordingly based on the project size. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we, we, uh, we, I don't think we've ever charged hourly for what we do. Um, you know, with the moving company, that's hourly because that's a service based, you know, yeah. that's, uh, you know, you're there for four or five hours, you know, it's just a, a different model, but yeah, that was, that was a big switch for us, you know, especially for me, you know, coming into the, going from B2C to B2B, uh, was a big switch. Number one for sales, hands down. Yeah. And then from there, just a pricing model, right. Having that different structure, creating that different uh, model and understanding, you know, how, what do you charge for the value you're providing? You know, you make a company, you know, a couple million dollars, even six figures in return in one month, you know, what do you charge sufficiently to, you know, provide that type of value? Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, I mean that's that's really what our revolves around our pricing structure and, and what we go for, um, you know. And, and depending on the client, you know, if we have a client comes on and they take all the services, we have like a uh, like what we would call like a whale package, mm -hmm. where we're we're doing a lot more than just the services that they they paid for. You know, we're doing damage control. We're making sure that everything's running smoothly. You know, like um, you know emergency state as well in case anything uh, is something happens out of the blue, right? Yeah. I'm sure you guys have experienced that, yeah. you know, uh, ad account gets shut down or, you know, um, Google account gets suspended or whatever that is, right? That, I mean, we react to that very fast and very quickly to get that taken care of and, and get you back up and running on these platforms. Cause you know, a lot of companies, I mean, I've seen it where, um, companies are spending their whole budget on just Facebook and that account gets shut down because Facebook can do that for whatever reason they oh, want. And it's happening more and more. It seems like, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I've, I've definitely been reading some horror stories where they just get shut down out of the blue. Mm -hmm. And like, of course, Facebook doesn't give an explanation either. And, and then they have no one to talk to, which right, is frustrating. Right. No one to talk to. And then it's like, well, that was the only I was only spending money there. I wasn't spending money on Google, wasn't mm -hmm. doing any native advertising, you know, nothing else, right? Their whole business just went to a pause, at, at least a significant reduce at the very least. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we do a lot of that, you know, um, and just try to be there for the client, you know, any questions, comments, concerns, make recommendations. I mean, I'm no sales expert my, myself, but when I go into a company, they don't have a CRM. They don't have automated mm -hmm. emails following up with the people based off CRM leads. I'm like, you know, listen, let's, let's get you guys set up here. I mean, my job is only as good as, you know, I can only do as good as, as your sales process is, yeah. right? I mean, I could drive you guys a hundred leads, but if you convert one of those because you guys don't have a proper sales funnel, you know, pipeline to follow yeah. up with people or automation, you know. So have you ever run into any issues with that? Cause that's where, I mean, we're, I mean, there's probably more businesses that don't have all that set up than do. And so if you go to the performance-based model, that's the the variable that could be negatively impacting what you're doing is driving these leads, but it's taking you four days for your sales team to even reach out because you guys don't want to either have a CRM or even have views or reports set up in your CRM to yeah. assign to the right person to then reach out. Um, so how do you kind of 
navigate that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with like a SWAT, you know, strength, weakness, mm-hmm. opportunity, uh, threats. Um, you can virtually do that for any, any piece of your business. I mean, operations management, uh, you know, marketing content, you know, you could literally just run that report through mm-hmm. your whole business and, and identify everything. So, uh, we try to do that with, with the clients. Um, sure. you know, when we onboard a client, usually we're, we're identifying and auditing what they've already done instead of just like taking them on board and like, all right, let's go. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. we could just be following right in the footsteps of the people who previously did it and what nothing was yeah. working. So. So, you know, that was one thing, you know, we brought on a client here recently. They had no, no CRM. They weren't doing, they, they were using MailChimp. I'm not a fan of MailChimp personally. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's a cheap, easy platform to use for beginners, but you know, I'm more about, uh, you know, I use a personally autopilot HQ. I love that platform. Yeah. Um, you know, I know active campaign, they're very good. Uh, and there's a few, you know, Clavio is good as well for e-commerce. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, you know, there's a few platforms out there that are, that are far superior to MailChimp, but they're just using a simple MailChimp automation you know, no CRM paper, you know, writing down on paper and things like that. And so I came in and that was the first thing we did, you know, before we really even took over the ads, we're like, all right, let's get you set up here because this is going to have a drastic effect as to how we do our, our job and drive you leads and get you sales is by having this organized. And that way we can identify where things are working, where things aren't working. And so, you know, we, uh, you know, even a, here's a, here's a horror story for you. We worked with a client one time and we drove a hundred leads to first month, hundred leads and called them up and said, Hey, how, how the leads yeah. going? And called them excitedly probably. Oh yeah. We're, I mean, we're thrilled. We're like, boom, hundred leads. I mean, got to convert something, yeah. right? I mean, even a 1% conversion rate is one lead, right? And yeah, we haven't seen any leads come through and we're like, well, this is the email. <laughs> this is the email we're sending them to. Oh yeah. None of our sales reps have access to that email. And we're like, well, why would you give uh-huh. us that email? You know, why we asked you clearly like, hey, what's a good email that everybody has access to that we can drive these leads to? And nobody had access to it. And I was just like, that is unbelievable to me. I mean, yeah, you know, it sucks. But, you know, of course, then those leads sat there for 30 days untouched, Ugh. you know, so it's just the like. The chances of reaching back out to them and then still exactly. being ready for your product or service yeah. is probably pretty minimal. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, again, Based off those experiences, we, we do some heavy audits and, and again, just some SWOT analysis of what are you doing? How's it working? Perfect. This is where we can be better. This is where you have some threats, you know, and, and opportunities. Um, and even, even involves around content too. You know, most people, um, I think content is, I mean, crucial. I mean, obviously that's why you guys are, are doing all this content. You guys probably have the equipment to do content because, you know, right now that's, I mean, that's almost the forefront of marketing right now is having yeah. good content that speaks to the customer, um, you know, and, and even long form content too, you know, copy uh, is, is important in the content game. So, so yeah, I mean, to answer your question, we just do try to do a full audit and understand yeah. what's going on, why that's, why that's exactly happening and how we're going to come in and we're going to solve that for you. Yeah, no, it's funny. We were just talking about this right before, but I, I think what, what you see in success is essentially the the pre planning or before you go in and and uh, that's another hard thing that we've had to learn this last I've had to learn this last year year and a half or so is uh, I mean you know I mean so I love the video or not video but even just content side because it's I mean six it's been like seven years now um, running the distribution sides so of the ads and all yeah. that and even working with huge brands it's like all right, we've had the same banner ad for literally three months. Like, it, and it's it's going out to anyone and everyone. And with the ability of of being able to segment down to, I mean, household incomes down to, I, there's so much that you could target. It's like it, there's no point in that if you're not producing the content to speak to that. And to me, it's like 100%. use the data to identify who these people are. And it's like. I, I, how I kind of compare it is like, all right, you're at a bar and there's, there's a hot chick or dude that you're wanting to talk to. If you know more about them, you're probably going to go up and have a better conversation rather than like what you say to them, your tone and all that is going to change the more you know about them. And that's how I kind of equate all this to is the more you know about your, your cold audience and, and the people that are in your CRM, the more you know about them, you can then lead the content production to have a better conversation. And to me, that's, that's why it's marketing communication. That's all this is, is having different conversations. We just now have the ability to identify how people are talking back. And I, I, I say, you look at the data and that's what people are saying. It's now what content can you then follow up with to then keep nurturing them down the, the overall marketing and sales funnel. Yep. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, and, and one question I did have is I know even on like 
the pills or shirts, I mean, just smaller ticket items. I think one thing that is wildly, wildly untalked about is lifetime value of a customer. And I think that, cause everyone's always like, well, I spent $3 to then make a dollar and it's like, I'm losing money. But it's like, okay, well, what are you doing to bring them back? Cause chances are you're not one and done. If you're selling vitamins, they probably need it every month. And so, I mean, do you guys help with that? It sounds like you got a lot of CRM knowledge. Do Absolutely. You help? That, I mean, that, I think that's, uh, I think in e-commerce and if you're selling an online product, lifetime value of a customer or at least a recurring product, I think mm-hmm. the lifetime value of a customer, almost a lot of people that we've talked to, number one, don't know what that means really. And they don't really know how to calculate that. And I think that's so important, you know, for like even our clothing company. And, you know, at, there were certain points where we had a 50% re, uh, customer retention rate. So even if we were selling a $40 t-shirt, we could afford to acquire that customer at $100 because they're coming back and purchasing more and more and more. Mm-hmm. And three purchases down the road, we are now in the green, right? And they're just going to yeah. keep coming back, keep coming back. So I think, you know, in e-commerce, this would totally sound backwards. But, you know, w- when we were running some e-commerce stuff, we were willing to lose money on the front end acquisition, knowing that they had such a good product and service and their customer retention rate was just coming back and back and yeah. back that we would spend, you know, $40 to acquire a customer for a $20 product. But, you know, again, four months down the road, when they're a recurring customer, they're just coming back every month, you know, that turns into a pretty significant profit. And most people don't look at that. And most of the clients that we've talked to, unfortunately, have the mindset of, well, I gotta you tell me I gotta put 10 grand into this. Yeah. I gotta come 10 grand out of my pocket and put it into this thing that, you know, we don't even know if it's gonna work yet. Or mm-hmm. right. I mean, nobody's looking at the back end ROI. Like that's my big thing, is like, well, look at what's to come out of this. You're you're gonna put money into a platform that, you know, we we know what we're doing. And I think marketing in general is kind of like a brain surgeon, right? A brain surgeon has to go to, they have to go to, you know, school for eight years to be a brain surgeon. You know, they're not going for two years and like, oh, well, let's do it. Let's give it <laughs> let's a try. Let's open up some schools. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's uh, start digging in, you know? So, so the same thing with marketing, you know? I mean, people are trusting people with one one year, maybe even less with, with their marketing money mm-hmm. and spending these budgets and it's going nowhere, you know? I, so I think... Uh, you know, having that knowledge and, and of course reassuring that client that you have that knowledge and, and being able to spend that money on the front end to acquire those customers to then, you know, retain them is a big part of that. And emails, I mean, email is one of the biggest parts of, of retaining customers and, and yeah. getting them to come back is, you know, I mean, you pay, usually pay a monthly fee for email, um, whether it be contacts or you just pay a fixed fee. Yeah. Um, and, you're sending emails out for free. You can send 800,000 800, emails mm-hmm. out, depending on your list, for free, yeah. right? I mean, you know, and even if you have a, you know, 5% conversion rate on that, I mean, that's still a significant people coming back yeah. that, again, you acquired on the front end, they purchased from you, you acquired all their information, and now you're just, you know, getting them to come back for free, you know? So I think um, lifetime value is huge for us. You know, I love, I love lifetime value. And, uh, I think a lot of people overlook that when acquiring customers and, you know, again, for us, you know, especially me being the CMO in our, in our clothing agency or sorry, clothing company. Um, you know, I look at that pretty heavily, you know, I'm like, all right, what's our customer retention rate? Because based off that, you know, we send, you know, we have a 5% conversion rate. We send, you know, 50,000 people there. We're going to have so many people convert and then we're going to have even that percentage of people who converted yeah. come back to us and yeah. continue to purchase. So, I mean, you can literally calculate that out, you know. And and so, again, I, I look at that very heavily and, and yeah. that gives me the ability to acquire customers on the front end at a little bit of a loss, which doesn't look good on paper, you know, especially with the CFO, you know. But <laughs> yeah. uh, but then you come swim back around and, and show them, you know, this is the tactic and strategy behind it, you know, mm-hmm. behind losing a little bit of money to, you know, ultimately gain a brand new customer and, and not – you know, I think I've heard you guys talk about this quite a bit, you know, not just be a direct response marketer, not don't be the guy in the Costco, you know, hey, do you want some direct TV? It's like, what if I already have it? You didn't even care to qualify me, exactly. right? You know, it's yeah. like you just threw something in my face and, and hoped that I would come and convert, right? I mean, you know, so qualifying that customer, being treating them like an actual person instead of just a, another customer um, and getting them in the door and, you know, treating them well instead of just, great, got your purchase. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all yeah. we needed you for. Yeah. You know, hope you enjoy the product. Yep. You know, so um, we try to avoid that and treat people like people, humans, you know, and, and uh, you know, get them in the door in, a, in an ethical way. And again, try to resell them in a, in a good way as well. You know, I think uh, 
a, a, this is a strategy that, uh, you know, we, we try to use depending on the client. Um, if it's a product, you know, you can usually segment lists out pretty well of mm-hmm. people who convert, right? Sending a video content or just even emails to those people. Um, you know, I, like I bought this, uh, it's called a whoop. Um, okay. I would highly recommend it. It monitors your sleep, your exercise, your recovery, um, your heart rate. So like when you go to the gym, you know, it measures how much mm-hmm. you're, you're producing and then based off your exertion for the entire day, it tells you how much sleep you should get. It tells you your sleep cycle. So, um, cool. being an analytical guy, I like yeah. looking at that stuff <laughs> and it, it's already helped me. You know, I've, I've noticed sleeping trends and, and trends in my workouts and just being able to, uh, identify those, but you know, they had recognized that I converted. And then, you know, a couple of days later, I had gotten an email saying, you know, here's your whoops trap. And it brought me to a video on how to set things up, how to take it out of the box, how to properly use it. And again, that's, to me, that is an incredible strategy. Instead of trying to upsell me right away on the next product, they were, they were instead paying to inform me about the current product I already bought. So that way I would, you know, gain trust, gain credibility, and gain knowledge about the company. So, so now I'm more entitled to go back and purchase from them because they're, they're putting me through a process instead of just like, perfect, got you as a customer. Well, just in case, you know, in case you didn't see it, we got sweatshirts too for, yeah. for $50. But since you bought a t-shirt, we'll give it to you for 20, right? Like, you know, we're not trying to do that. We're, you know, we're trying to, again, treat people like people, mm-hmm. walk them through the process, you know. And, and if you have a technical product, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, again, this wristband, you know, if I didn't have that video, I would have taken it out and been like, well, now what? You know, yep. so, yeah. so again, you know, I really enjoyed um, not only seeing that strategy um, happen to me and work on me, but also, you know, deploying that strategy as well. Again, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people overlook that, you know, um, there's, you know, great example is like hair curlers. Um, we were prospecting a client one time and, and they sell, you know, curling irons, hairspray, you know, all that stuff. And a lot of people were uh, asking them, how do we, how do we get the perfect curl? Right. And they do free consultations. And so, you know, that's a point where you then run marketing videos to your converters. You know, here's how to get the perfect curls with your brand new yeah. iron you just bought, right? And again, instead of trying to upsell them on, here's a brand new comb that would help with your curler or here's some hairspray. It's like, you know, here's how to get the best use out of the product you just bought, yeah. right? And then and then after that, then you have the right to go and say, you know, hey, this would even help you even more, right? Now, yeah. that, we've, now that we've won you as a customer. So um, again, just treating people as people and getting people in the door and, and really embracing that lifetime value and educating people on what we're doing with them. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that approach. Um, definitely speaking our language and, and yeah, it, it, by educating, you're bringing more value and then it could turn people into brand ambassadors, which creates the word of mouth, which is always going to have the, the highest ROI because you don't have to spend money on someone going out and telling their friends. Like, I mean, you just brought it up on this because of your experience and stuff like that. And even then you could, you could upsell in a way that isn't car use car salesman ish where it's like the people that have watched the video all the way through or like like you can segment the audience based off of how they're engaging with that video and the ones that watched all the way through or keep coming back and then maybe it's like hey it looks like you like this here's some other things related to it rather than everyone that got that two days later we send this upsell where it's like well they might not even watched it so it's like again using data to then know more about the person where they can continue the conversation there's uh, yeah i think uh there's so much opportunity there and 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 so many people don't leverage that. And so yeah, exactly. I kind of, as we kind of wrap things up, would love to hear what, what does your next 12 months look like for you and your agency? And like, what do you think, I mean, is, is the biggest opportunity in the marketing space? It's a great question. You know, the next 12 months are just, you know, definitely going to be focused on getting some, some new clients in the door and, and helping more people at the end of the day, you know, I, with, with marketing and, and, uh, you know, just being in the service base business in general, um, uh, with the last couple of companies, you know, I've really found an, I mean, even the jobs I worked in high school, you know, that service based, you know, helping customers and just, you know, seeing satisfied customers that had, they had a good experience. Um, that's what I really enjoy. So, you know, that's why I'm, I'm in this business is to, to help people achieve their goals and, and get to where they want to be. So, you know, the next 12 months, uh, obviously looks like, um, you know, continuing education for sure. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing, you know, and, these platforms are ever changing. Everything's changing for us. And, uh, and we need to be able to adapt to that just as quickly as it's coming out. You know, if Facebook changes the algorithm, we, we need to be able to hop on that and, and know about it and, and learn how to leverage that much more. Um, and then, you know, I, 
just going after some more high ticket clients, you know, I'd like to try to get into the automotive industry. Um, you can do some pretty cool stuff with some of the data that you can buy. Oh, and yeah. of course, some, some of the native advertising. I mean, you can, anybody who goes to cars.com or, you know, Craigslist yeah. or anything like that, right? Just, you're retargeting them. And then, uh, you know, people visit your neighborhood dealership and not necessarily yours. You can pick up on that and, you know, bring them back to your place, um, even send them email. So, um that's what that looks like. And then, you know, as far as like growth, you know, we're, we're not trying to take on like 20, 30 clients um, because I feel like you can lose um, a significant amount of quality that you're delivering to those clients. You know, so we look for really a client that uh, we know we can help for sure. And yeah. then, you know, that's, it's also going to be a good partnership. You know, they value us, they value what we do. They know what we do. They respect what we do. And, and even have the budget to do it. You know, I think uh, one of the great things about working uh, with some of the clients that we have now is, is as we're learning, we find new tools to help what we do uh, get better, right? I mean, it's like, yeah, I think you touched on this earlier. It's like, imagine showing up to build a house with no tools. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you're there yeah, to you yeah. know, piece it together and you know, <laughs> nails, screws. I mean, probably wouldn't pass inspection. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, or even showing up to, to re roof a house without a ladder, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know, we find all these new tools to help better what we do and, and deliver what we do. And, and, you know, of course, that doesn't really come out of our pocket. That comes out of the client's pocket because at the end of the day, it's their platform, you know, whatever yeah. it may be, it's their account. You know, they pay for it and they, they get to keep it whether they stay with us or not, right? So, um, you know, having the money and the budget to be able to, you know, on top of that, it's been in our management fee, be able to purchase some of those uh, excess platforms to, again, better what we do and, and ultimately help their business and, and create automation. Um, you know, so that's a, a huge thing that that's big for us. And then, of course, uh, learning how to um, analyze better data and analytics so that, you know, obviously you can get better at uh, how you're performing and, and reaching out to people and, and getting in front of people. And, and really, uh, you know, I think data and KPIs are really big for me um, personally. Um, you know, I think you get lost in data very easily oh, yeah. looking at too much of it. But if you're looking at the things, you know, what you want to look at and change and, you know, one month you could be looking at this metric, but we fix that metric. That, that looks fantastic. Now we want to move on to, all right, what's our landing page? you know, load up speed look like, or, yeah. you know, what's all this different um, KPIs? Because, I mean, like I said, you get lost in KPIs, you'd be like, all right, well, we got 30 things to do, and you're just frozen, right? You kind of, like, freeze up, and which, what do we do first, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like move on one to the next to the next. Um, so, I mean, really, that's what our next 12 months looks like, you know, especially for me is is a lot of education. You know, I need, yeah. to, I need to stay on top of these platforms. I need to stay on top of marketing um, and what's going on in the business world. And then, you know, like I said, just, just getting some more qualified clients, people that we want to work with and people who have the, the budget to work with us um, to really get them some good results. So I love it. And uh, this has been great. I enjoy this conversation. There's so yeah. many more questions I want to ask. So I'm sure that uh, it'd be I'm sure I'll be reaching out. It would be cool to do uh, another follow up to this because yeah, there's absolutely. a lot like the geofencing. There's just a lot that we didn't even touch exactly, on yeah. um, <laughs> that would love to. But uh, yeah, I mean, if there's anyone that that wants to reach out or has any questions or just might be in that higher higher budget range or just mm -hmm. a higher ticket item that they would like to, to sell more of, how could they reach out to you or what can they find you? Yeah, so you can uh, find us on social media uh, at FG Marketing Co. Uh, same with our website is fgmarketingco.com. And then, uh, you know, my personal email, I, I try to reply to everybody. Um, you know, I'm, I'm the client manager. You know, I, I believe in, in not only working on the platforms, but also being able to translate that properly to the client. So uh, my email is, is jared at fgmarketingco.com. So, again, feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm always happy to help, give us some advice and, and uh, you know, see how we can further that, that relationship. So uh, and then, of course, all my personal social media is at Jared Gobler, too. So. I mean, I don't post too much myself. I'm, I'm more focused on getting my clients results than, yeah. uh, than my personal brand, which I probably need to work on more, but, uh, it's always, there's only so much time in the day. <laughs> That's right. It's only yeah. so much time in the day. Yep, exactly. So, uh, I think, you know, big priority for me is just taking care of my clients. You know, it's big for me. So love it. Well, appreciate the time and, yeah. uh, we'll be connecting soon. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you.